Okay, hello everyone. My name is Eric Misalski, and in this tutorial we're going to be continuing the organic modeling series, but taking a look at specular maps. And so far we've gone over bump and color map creation. So let's take a look at our model. This is what we get if we just apply general specular level and glossiness to our head material. And what we want to do is we want to isolate where areas are shiny, what areas are not, and the intensity of that. So just as an example of how a specular map works, in the specular level channel, we're just going to add a very simple checker. If we go ahead and render it, what happens is wherever it's white is going to be full specular intensity. Wherever it is black, there will be no specular intensity. And so what we'll do is we'll use this information to paint a specular map that puts shininess wherever we want it to be. So let's clear our map by right-clicking on it and going to clear, and then switching over back to Photoshop. Now we already here have the bulk map, and we can use some of this information for our specular map. So if we copy our bump map, rename it, and go up to Image Adjustments Levels. Now we want it to be fairly, like the lowest level to be very close to black. We want to bring out the whites quite a bit, but we still want to keep that black background, so we just kind of adjust it as best we can. Okay. Here we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer and we're going to start painting in the areas that we're interested in. You know, to have more specular specularity. So if we select our brush, make sure it's white, and go to lighten. Give ourselves a nice brush size. And make sure our opacity is fairly low. We'll then go in and just start painting in areas that we're interested in. So like the tip of the nose. It's very shiny. The lips are very shiny. Naturally, so are the eye sockets. And so you just keep on going through and just making ver the various areas shiny. So let's jump ahead to where we have a few of these parts already painted in. Okay, so here we are with a couple areas painted in. Now you may notice that this is first off very rough. The reason for this is that we're going to later blur it to kind of merge a lot of these areas together. Secondly, You'll notice some of the areas where I chose to add details or to add highlights. On the forehead, on the nose, on the side of the nose, the lips, the eyes, and so forth. You basically want to look at areas of the face that are naturally oily. One common, um, common rule or guideline that you can follow is where do people have a tendency to touch their, their face? So they sometimes stroke their chin, and so it usually gets oily down there. Touch their nose, it gets oily there. Cheeks, so forth, and the forehead, and so on. And then naturally areas that are exposed to moisture, such as the eyes and lips, are obviously um, going to be shiny as well. So once we have these basic colors in place, we're now going to go up to 
filter and blur, Gaussian blur. And we're going to play with the slider to get a nice blend where we keep our highlights and keep our hot spots, but also blend and get a nice smooth transition from one to the next. And if we don't like what we're seeing in terms of distribution, we can just hit cancel, go back and paint a little bit more, like here down here on the chin, and then go back up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, so we get a little bit more uniform transition. And so I'm going to stick with something similar to this. should be good. Now, I also want to lighten up this area at the top here. This might be a little bit too intense for our purposes. So I'm just going to select it <coughs> and I'm going to go up to Image, Adjustments, Brightness, Contrast Drop the brightness down, increase the contrast a little bit. Basically just try to get into the right color range that you want. Once you're done with that, what we're going to do now is we're going to first test this out to see how it looks. And actually, we need to do a little bit more clean up here, because that selection caused us a little bit of a problem. And so We'll just blur this. Let's jump ahead. Okay. Here we are. I just softened up the area or the transition period a little bit. Alright, so let's just test this out really quick. So we go up to File, Save As. And this time, we'll do head spec. Okay. And so now we're going to switch over to max. Okay, so here's where we left it. Now in our specular level channel, we're going to click on none. Go up to bitmap. We're going to choose our head underscore spec image. Click open, let it think for a bit, collapse layers. We're just going to leave it as is for now. So now if we render it out, you can see that we get a nice, you know, specular highlights on the brow, sharp one on the nose, and a bit on the lips, and around the eyes, a little on the cheeks as well. But the rest is very, very diffuse, with not a lot of uh, specular highlights. If we turn off our specular map, you can see the difference in the intensity and where the specular highlights actually show up. So what we want to do is we just want to, again, jump back and forth between Max and here to really, you know, paint exactly what we need. Now one little trick that we can do, and that sometimes helps with the specular highlights, so let's take a really, really close look at our surface. Now right now it's actually not too bad, because what we have here is we have our bump map which handles the really high frequency noise. And so it's breaking up the specular quite a bit. However, what we can do is we can actually go into Photoshop here, and if on our highlight layer, if we go to Texture, Texturizer, let it think for a bit, and let's try to find our, and I can't see anything here. So we're actually going to eyeball it, or guess, I should say. So what this will do here is this will add a lot of little details, the sandstone pattern. So we're just going to leave the values of 54, 
for the scaling and two for the relief. Click OK. If we zoom in a bit, it ended up, see, roughing up our specular a little bit. And so this can help with our end result, just giving it a little bit more chaos and a little bit more randomness. Okay, so once you have that, you can combine it with our specular layer. We could now, if we want, do a little bit of a level adjustment to, again, try to bring things into a similar range. We can blur it a little bit, we can add more details, whatever we, whatever we need to do. Save it out, switch over, and so very, very subtle change. I don't know if it's going to show up with uh, the compression for the video, but there you go. Nice contained specular highlights. Alright, so that'll basically do it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or post on the forums. In the next tutorial, what we'll end up covering is we'll end up covering a way to actually use our nice color map here, but still get accurate shading between the skin and the hair. So basically letting the hair have its own shading parameters, highlights, and so forth, and ha let the skin have its own properties. So, um, yep, just post on the forums. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching.